Shout out Young Swiss. Yo, welcome back to my channel which I've been very inactive in the past month or two and I'm very sorry for that. I, I was just super swamped with work. Um, I, know, I know that's not an excuse, but just wait. I have other reasons why I haven't been posting on YouTube as much as I want to. Couldn't be bothered to post any YouTube videos after that one commotion when a couple of YouTubers have visited Tokyo and I finally got to see the side of that YouTube content creator community. And I just couldn't really be bothered to, or even have the fucking courage to be classified as one of them. Which, mind you, I have, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just, for me personally, I don't think it's my forte and it's, my, it's, it's something that I can't be fully myself around if you know what i mean i can't channel that forced energy and have this fake persona of someone that i'm not um just to make content and i don't use youtube as something that i depend monetarily primarily started youtube as a creative outlet where i can like show you guys what tokyo really is like especially for those who can't really travel out here i know flight tickets are just mad expensive i think it's like two grand from like new york to tokyo which is kind of outrageous but um, my whole purpose of making YouTube was to really showcase what Tokyo culture, lifestyle, and like the fashion scene is. To be honest, I couldn't really provide that for you guys in the past month just because I was just like really swamped with work as well as I had to travel to New York and Seoul to visit my friends, my family, and it was really hard to just maintain all that whilst doing like fucking YouTube. And on top of that, it's just like, it makes me feel uncomfortable like putting people in general on the spot and make them feel uncomfortable in front of a camera. Even if I ask them for like permission, I know a lot of people aren't used to talking in front of a camera and that makes me uncomfortable for some reason to put them on the spot. So maybe it's just me. Maybe it's just something that I can't ever you know come to agreement with that's just not my forte yeah i honestly could have vlogged in new york i'm sure you guys have seen that i've traveled to new york for like around 10 11 days um i was thinking of shooting some content but honestly i just wanted to like spend time with my friends and my girl and really wanted to live in the moment and i didn't really want to like focus all my energy into the camera so i'm very sorry for that and apologize but here i am showing you guys good content so so yeah, um, from here on, I think I'll try to post as much content as possible, but honestly, I still believe in the whole mantra of like quality over quantity. Even, even when it comes to like YouTube, I wanna make quality videos for you guys. And I, as much as I want to post as many as I can, it's, it's hard to make quality content while thinking about having to post like three videos a week, you know what I'm saying? And this is a pattern that I picked up like watching other YouTubers is that because they're so engulfed into like this YouTube standards where they have to post let's say like two or three videos a week the quality of their content just like starts to become so lackluster there's no class or like a theme behind the YouTube anymore I'm sure you guys want to see just like random vlogs and just my life in general uh, I do want to keep some parts of my life private and I hope you guys respect that but I will try to make content that you guys want to see such as today's video which is going to be based around some of my pickups that I've uh, purchased in the past month or so I'd say and uh, the main highlight is going to be mostly outerwear and some sneakers as well as maybe bags and some accessories so Please enjoy the video. Uh, again, thank you for the new subscribers. I don't know how exactly they found my channel, but I'm very grateful for that. So enjoy the video.
first jacket, which I'm sure a lot of you guys are familiar with, is the Raf Simmons Riot Bomber, notoriously known for its classic MA1 silhouette created with vintage army surplus materials, personally sourced and thrifted by the one and only Raf Simmons himself. I honestly don't know why this jacket is worth upwards of $30,000 nowadays, but I believe the price of this jacket has surged due to the fact that iconic celebrities such as Kanye West, Rihanna, and Kim K have worn them around back in 2017. But even prior to that, the value of this jacket has always floated in the midst of the holy grails. In terms of the fit and quality of this jacket, the vintage cotton used in this piece is very washed and broken in perfectly, mimicking the look of an oversized flight bomber, which personally, I will style this with other vintage pieces as well, just for the reason that the jacket in itself already gives off that vintage aesthetic. Honestly, this fit could have been a little bit more elevated if I were to replace the sweatpants with a nice vintage pair of cargoes. But just for the sake of this video, I'm just showing you guys the versatility of this bomber that it really works around your entire wardrobe. As with a lot of other oversized jackets and bombers out there, it really functions as something that you can really play around with your proportions. So. Don't be discouraged by oversized jackets. So moving on, uh, this next jacket is a Helmut Lang 1998 vintage cotton parka jacket. I don't even know if it's a parka jacket or a down jacket. It just fucking looks like a ski jacket to me. And to be honest, I wasn't really confident in buying this piece, but since it does give off that off-white cream undertones, um, it is definitely a little bit more versatile as opposed to if it were to be maybe a pure cocaine white jacket since it is made of vintage materials it has that wash and fade to it in the sunlight this gives off more of a casual lifestyle friendly uh, piece of garment that you can really wear with your entire wardrobe so just for the sake of this video i am wearing the rick owens berlin sweatpants again just to really show off the versatility and wearability of each and every outerwear piece that i have so bear with me but if I were to actually try to pull off a fit with this jacket, I would definitely pair it with a nice washed indigo denim and a pair of black combat boots. So this next piece here is the Cab to Parachute Bomber, which took the inspiration from the uh, infamous Issei Miyake Parachute Bomber, uh, probably like a decade ago. And um, Robin Williams RIP kind of pulled off a fit with this, which is fire by the way. But regardless, Issei Miyake or not, this parachute aesthetic has been treasured and cherished by a lot of brands to mimic the same look. And, you know, I think it not only is a jacket, but it also serves as function because of all these pockets that you have on the sleeves, your chest, the back, and there's a hidden hood on the back of your jacket as well. I think this piece is the exact definition of a function over form. I got an XL in it, which, you know, I think it worked out fine because I do like how it fits on my body. And since I do have a wider, broader frame, that's the thing about buying clothes is that you really need to know the dimensions and the proportions of your body that you can work with. And, you know, all these garments have their own sizing and measurements that you have to look out for. So before you buy it, always ask for measurements and compare it with your body proportions. So the next piece here is the Craig Green quilted jacket. Um, and I think it's his take on the classic biker leather jacket aesthetic, but instead he quilted it and used his own materials to it and reconstructed it in his own dimensions and fit and shape and form. The jacket in itself is very light and soft with tassels hanging around the entirety of your jacket. And um, I honestly think this piece is super cool and underrated because the way it fits and forms around your body is very different than that of your classic leather biker jacket and you can definitely easily play around with you know the lapels that it has on the jacket you can either zip it up or zip it down it is dual zip so you can zip it both ways um, definitely a lot of ways to really play around with this piece so I'm very glad to get it in my size I would definitely style this piece with a little bit more of a classier look probably a higher waisted trouser t-shirt tucked in with a nice pair of either leather Chelsea boots or leather strap boots. 
Um, even fucking combat boots would work with this piece because it has that fucking like avant-garde aesthetic to it that you can really wear and experiment with your wardrobe. Alright, so moving towards the bottom portion of my wardrobe, we're gonna start off with the Dior strip denim from the Hediera. Um, the silhouette is very unique in the sense that it's not very heady like uh, He, I know he gears towards more of a slim skinnier look But for this particular denim, the shape of it is a lot baggier and more relaxed But it still does have a little bit of a taper and tailor to it As well as this pair of denim is supposed to be waxed But uh, the person I bought it from has already worn it so much that the wax already worn off I was never really a fan of the whole wax fad thing but the way i would style this denim is very simple i wouldn't really go overboard with this just because the denim in itself is all already like pretty od so the next pair of pants i'm very excited to share just because it actually took me like around five months to track this guy down um but these are the 98 hummel wang bondage pants which you know I don't know why it's so rare or why it's so hard to find, I think. It's because one, it is an archive piece. Two, it is fucking sick looking pair of bondage pants. And three, I think once the buyer buys them, like they're not being willing to give it up. So, so the reason why I'm so attached to this particular pair of pants is that it really embodies like the perfect pair of cargo slash bondage trousers. And it's, you know, nowadays it's very hard to find something that's not too loud. And, you know, since these are a pair of cargo trousers, I think it really looks its best when you wear it with a nice black, you know, combat boots. So going along the same lines of cargo pants, these are another pair of 98 Helmet Wang bondage trousers. And these are a little bit more different from the previous pair. Um, the color, the size, the fit, and it also has a five pocket detailing in the front as well as a bondage strap that covers in the back of your knee area. I tried this on with a pair of combat boots and it works if you tuck it in, but otherwise I would say just stick to like a nice clean pair of maybe chunkier sneakers. I don't think Vans would work too well with this just because will be too big for them. It is very lightweight material, so the cotton is like almost see-through if you shine it through the sunlight. And since these pair of pants have a lot going on, I would personally style it with simpler outerwear and sneakers. Um, so maybe the white parka jacket that I've mentioned earlier and a nice pair of Air Force Ones would pretty much do the trick, right? You know when people wear like sweatpants, they don't always have to look so bummy. Shout out Jerry Lorenzo. Like you can definitely wear a pair of nice luxe sweatpants and still feel and look good. And you know, there are not a lot of pair of sweatpants out there that really, you know, epitomizes that. And I think these might be the perfect luxe sweatpants out in the market and as well as the Rick Owens Berlins. I guess my only advice is that you'd wanna stay away from a lot of printed graphic and like branded shit because you wouldn't want like fucking Off-White or Louis Vuitton to speak for who you are. You want to be your own individual person and you can just do that by creating a nice silhouette and proportion through you know, your personal style and I guess brands and just Printed loud shit isn't something that you'd want to opt for. Um, first off, let's start off with the Dior Navigates, which I'm sure you guys are very familiar of. Um, these are the 07 patent leather Navigate boots. The sizing on these are very tricky because I've owned two pairs before, which um, to failure, uh, 
I mispurchased because it just didn't fit me, but I finally found my sizing. I think I'm gonna go true to size EU42, which is equivalent to like US9. And I just put thick memory foam insole in it and it just fits perfect. So that's a little hack for you guys who's looking into buying it. These are the Saint Laurent Fall Winter 15 Ochre Chelsea boots that I fucking never wear just because it's just not, it's just not my aesthetic guys. Like. This is probably one of the pieces that I actually never really wear from my wardrobe. So um, it's still in very pristine condition with Vibram sole attached to it. If you guys want it, let me know. Keeley's low in light gray colorway, which I got for a hundred bucks on Boxing Day in Europe. So don't tell me you can't find steals, bro. Like honestly, you just have to be patient. Uh, Mason Margiela Air Force Ones, their classic take on the um, silhouette that you guys are familiar with, the Nike Air Force Ones, but they did it with their own rendition of very luxe leather. I Honestly, I haven't really worn them much because these are kind of heavy. So just to be a little bit more aware when you buy it or when you guys are looking into it, these are heavier than your usual sneakers. Jowns, the Vans Low, uh, what is it, Old Schools. And uh, these are probably like my most worn these two are probably my most worn pair of sneakers just because it's just very simple and very easy to wear with your entire wardrobe safe and nothing too loud jound is such a hyped up brand now because of virgil abloh um and now the markup price is like a thousand bucks or so so do not be stupid and buy that at that price nike 1985 Jordan 1s, which I have shown previously on my video. Uh, still in amazing condition. I think the more wear you get out of it, the more character you add to it. So I think these are staples in my wardrobe. I'll never let these go. I'm actually considering doubling up on these because it goes well with literally everything. the Mihara Yasuhiro Vans, which it's not a collaboration surprisingly, it's just the, uh, it's just their, their own take on the skate highs with thicker soles and has that like very Margiela-esque aesthetic to it. But it just, I don't know, I love it to death. Like it's amazing, but it's just really hard to wear because, I don't know, the sizing really fucked me up. Uh, but nevertheless, very cool shoe to just look at in general just because of how interesting it is. Uh, very underrated designer as well. Mihara Yasuhiro, he does like very cool Japanese aesthetic. Oh, these are Chrome Hearts Belt. If a lot of you guys are wondering, a lot of you guys have been asking me how much these are, which I think I've mentioned in my previous video and don't want to fucking like reiterate that. So Chrome Hearts Belt, these are, hold up. The Dries Van Noten um, holster suspenders that I can wear with like a white button up just to look just to like add a little bit more spice to it. You don't wanna to look too boring with just a classic button up and trousers. So if you guys are wearing a tuxedo or you know, white button up with a bow tie, fire. Just makes you look a little bit more fly, so to speak. What else? Beanies, probably over like 10 and probably a mast over 15 but I just had to throw them away because it was getting a little bit worn out. Also, I have this uh, Kiko bag that I've copped recently in New York. Very cool, it goes, I mean, honestly, it fits literally everything. I believe it's sold out everywhere. I knew, I know Essence had like the gray and black one sitting there for a minute, but eventually it sold out, so 
if you guys find one for a good price, definitely go for it. I think it's worth it. Um, what else? Glasses. Thierry Lazary sunglasses that I fucking never wear. It's because, I don't know, I'm a hoarder for small shit like sunglasses and beanies, but it just, I never end up wearing them, you know? Like, it's sick because it has like a yellow tint to it. And if you're wearing like all black or all white or monochromatic outfit, this adds like a little spice to it. Uh, that's it. Well, literally, that's pretty much all I have to show. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'm a little tired, a little jet lagged too, just because I recently got back from a trip. Um, but I'm finally happy to be able to talk to you guys again through the camera, through YouTube, and I will try my best to again post as many videos as I can, but at the same time, I want it to be quality heavy than quantity heavy, so bear with me if I'm not posting as much. Let me know if you guys have any questions or comments in the uh, little comment section down below. So yeah, uh, that's pretty much it. Thank you guys for watching. Peace. Have a good one. Yeah.